What is going on everyone? It's the Print House and today I'm going to be giving you my initial thoughts on the dual extruder printer from Soval. So guys, stick around. So the first thing that I want to mention about the SVO2 is this entire machine is built like a tank. There is absolutely nothing on this printer that feels cheap or low quality to me. And to demonstrate that, this screen housing, this is all metal. And then if we want to compare it to something like the Ender 3 V2, I don't know if you can tell the difference plastic and then metal now I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell the difference on camera but please just take my word for it this machine is built very well the next thing to mention is gonna be belt tensioning tensioning your belts on your SVO2 is not very difficult and I'm happy with that so you'll see on both your axes you have a couple bolts that you need to loosen and then in this case you would loosen these bolts these two on the left you would pull your uh, mechanism outward or inward depending on whether you want to tighten or loosen and then you would tighten the bolts back down here it's very similar you just uh, loosen the bolts pull this mechanism back and then you can tighten it or you can push it forward to loosen it now very easy however to compare it over to something like an ender 3 v2 it's not as easy so over here all you have to do is you twist this knob left or right depending on whether you want to tighten or loosen it and then likewise over here, it's the exact same. This is very, very easy. This over here, not made as easy, but guys, it is still not difficult. Also, tightening and uh, loosening your belts is not something you have to do super regularly. So I am very pleased with how this printer comes. That being said, from the factory, these belts are exceptionally loose. These are very, very loose. I checked both of these axes, also loose. I don't know if this is gonna focus. Just touching it, you can see it has a lot of flex just touching it. Whereas over here, uh, just touching my belt, it doesn't flex as much. And then this strums like a guitar as it should down here. This is just very loose. I absolutely am going to have to tension these belts. Both of them from factory come way too loose. So if you purchase one of these printers, just realize you're gonna have some minor calibration that you're gonna have to do once you take it out of the box. So the next thing about this printer that I like is very, very minor, but that is the fact that the power switch is here on the far right of the machine, very easy to access. There's gonna be no mistaking where the switch is, turning the machine on is super easy. Compared over here to something like an Ender 3 V2, and you have to reach your hand all the way to the back of the machine, dig around through some cables, miss the power switch nine times out of 10. I hate this machine and turn the power on. I will not miss that with this machine. One of my favorite things about the SVO2 right off the bat is the menu navigation. It is very easy, you click print, Select your file, click the print button. If you aren't looking to print, you want to preheat the bed, you can do it manually. And if you do it manually, it gives you the option to change the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature to whatever you would like. Uh, if you don't care and you just want it a generic PLA or ABS temperature, super quick there. Uh, setting wise, you've got the ability to change your filament. You've got the ability to move the bed. You've got the ability to move the nozzle, all the axes. You can level, leveling with this menu navigation ability for auxiliary leveling is very, very easy. It pops up with a screen. It gives you all four corners where your screws are and the nozzle automatically moves to that position and you can then twist the screws, do your auxiliary leveling the way you want, which by the way, the screws uh, supplied do appear to be upgraded screws. They are substantially better than any other printer that I have from factory. 
uh, and for the more advanced users and for calibration you have very easy abilities to change your steps jerk uh, velocity uh, acceleration I mean very easy easy things to change here uh, guys the menu navigation system is one of my favorite things about this printer all right guys this is a big one this printer is very very quiet I'm gonna go ahead and move the printer I'm gonna not talk I'm gonna let you listen you won't hear anything but the fan noise listen in. This printer really is that quiet. It is absolutely amazing. Now the fan, it can definitely be upgraded. That's a cheap fix, but the motors, the board, it is super, super quiet. I have a bunch of printers and there is no way that any of these printers are quieter than the SVO2. All right guys, so, so far I've only found one problem with this printer and it is a very big one. So these Z-axis connectors, for the motor they come from factory wrapped under this bar going the wrong way and I've only homed this printer about 10 times and as the bed comes back it hits the connectors and as a matter of fact it actually sometimes gets wrapped around and then when the printer goes back it has the ability to pull the connector out you don't want to get into a long you know 50 60 70 hour print and have your z-axis motor get unplugged there is going to be an easy fix to that so from factory you're going to want to unplug these connectors you're going to want to pull them to the outside of your printer and then plug them back in now i am going to go one step further i am going to model up a stl file in order for you guys to print and what it's going to do is once you plug them in it's going to then depress this connect or this wire in order to stay as far away from those screws as possible. As I was doing my initial inspections of this printer, I did however notice one problem, and that is that this wheel does not spin as the gantry moves up and down. I noticed that all of the other wheels do properly spin, but that is uh, something to note in that the wheels might not have great tolerances from factory, I do not know if this is going to affect print quality, but I will do some tests over time to determine if it does, and I'll let you guys know how to fix it accordingly. Alright guys, like I said, this is a first impressions review. I still have not made a print with this printer. I've just examined it, tried to figure out the best things about it right out of the box to give you guys what I think about this printer. I'm going to be using it a lot over the coming months. In about four or five months, I'm going to come back to you guys. I'm going to give you a full review of this printer, tell you everything I like about it, tell you everything I hate about it. I'm going to give you some comparisons between the other printers I own. I'm going to tell you which one's better. Guys, if you stuck around this far, please drop me a like and a subscribe. I've got so much content coming with this. You don't want to miss it, guys. I'll see you on the next one.